what up y'all with my girls to come in we are going to talk about um teen pregnancy today which is um i'm excited about that because i get to talk to my friend that i have been friends with for the past 30 30 years and um she was actually a teen mom and i didn't realize um how intense that was until um hey girl until i had children then i was like oh shit let me get you to join hold on How are you? Kiss you so much. Oh, me too, girl. Uh, it's been too long. I know. I owe you a visit. How are you guys doing? Good. You know, settling how everything is with all that's going on in the world. You know, still trying to make time for reality and some peace, girl. relaxation you in the midst of everything. And you with all the kids at home. Little. Uh Hi, hold on, let me get Denisha up in here. Um, it's been crazy, but you know, we wouldn't. Hey, girl. Hey. Hi. 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 I'm so nice excited to for you. Today. Nice I to meet you, too. <laughs> okay, here's the crazy part. So, you know how I know Denisha, Marty? I know Denisha because, you know, when I used to teach dance in New York, I was her dance teacher. No way. Yes. <laughs> wow, that long? <laughs> yes. I was her dance teacher. She was young. Wow. Um, yeah, and then you know we both had children, and you know how that goes, and we just connected again, but like on a whole nother level. Wow, oh, whole nother level. It's just been super, super wow. amazing. Whole nother level. Um. So yeah, let's get started. All right. So, um, for those who are watching now, for those who watch later, um, I thought this topic was super, super important to discuss because. Um, I realized, first of all, let me just say, like, I have, like, five, um, girlfriends that I grew up with, and only two of us didn't have children when we were younger. Everybody else, between 16 and 19, had babies. Now, I didn't have my first baby till I was 34. I got pregnant at 33. And I kid you not, all I could think about was Marlene. I thought about Marlene. I thought about my other two best friends who gave birth at 19. Um, but more than anything, Marlene, because she was the youngest one out of all of us. And I just felt I was like, 16. yeah, I lost my mind. Like, you know, after having Tristan, just, just everything postpartum is so real. And, um, mm. so many emotions, you know, and, and that, that, you know, I had a, I had a, a successful, um, career. I had a husband. I had all these things by that age. And I still felt like I was going crazy. So, I thought about, you know, at 16, what were we doing, Marlene? We were, like, clubbing. I was doing everything I was not legally supposed to be yes, doing. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> We were up in Asia. We were, well, if, if you're our age range, you would know what Casa Quisqueya was. Yes. <laughs> or was it Casa one. Blinking? I forgot what it was. Girl, we were. Casa Blanca. <laughs> anything that. Anything that had the word casa, anything. I was gonna say, we y'all was at all the houses, <laughs> <laughs> toda la casa. <laughs> Yo, we were at hooky jams. Oh my god, girl! Like this is how far we go. Like I remember, we cut school one time. We were what? Oh god, this is so scary because for the, <laughs> obviously I was a teen mom, so I was sixteen. <laughs> I am thirty eight, so my twenty two year old is listening, and she's gonna throw this all back at me. <laughs> Yo, I remember we cut school. We went to the beach. Oh my all god! Of us, we went to the beach. There was another time we all went and got our nose pierced. Oh my god! We, Just cause we were, we were a mess. We were a fucking mess, y'all. Um, but we had a fun time. Let me tell you something. We have fun. We definitely. I think, have that, I think our era, um, like this new generation, they don't even understand the concept of fun. You know, no, like, yeah, they don't. No. I, fun now is like getting drugged up and like actually risking your life. Like it's just really weird. No, all we think. wanted to do was dance, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted when we went to the clubs. It wasn't about even getting fucked up. It, we wanted to dance and party. That's it. It was never no intention on who we were gonna meet. 
Nope. Oh, we're going to meet niggas. It was never nope. that. It was always just, let's go out to have a blast. We just want to have a party. Fun. Yep, that was it. We always loved to dance, to bug out, to have a good time. That's all we were about. Um, but in the mix of this partying and all these things and these lives that we were living and enjoying ourselves, um, Marlene gets pregnant. I sure did. And at the time, because we all think we're grown, we didn't think anything of it. It was like, oh, Marlene is having a baby, you know. You're no, you, what you're doing. <laughs> they, they literally, like, I look back at it now, their reaction, my best friends. Um, so she has five best friends. I had two main best friends. And their reactions were like, we're just going to be aunts. Like, we're just going to be godmothers. We're going to be aunts. And I can't wait for my nephew and niece to come into this world. Like, <laughs> like not a care in the world. We, I don't even think in our entire friendship, while I was pregnant, that we have, like, real heart-to-heart. -heart, like, how are you going to make it through the night? Or no. how are you going to afford diapers? It was just never that. It was no. just crazy. I, I bought a little dress. I was at Old Navy. Look what I got the baby. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was isn't that crazy though like what did you when you when you look back now um what do you think were your biggest um challenges as a teen mom um most definitely were my hormones um just being a teenager your hormones are all over the place being Who's pregnant your hormones are all over the place relationships are hard as an adult so going through breakups, cheating, relationships, pregnant at 16 was just like, you know, as an adult, we worry about getting to work and paying our rent. And that sounds super challenging. And you're going to say, well, how is going to school that challenging? You're just going to school. No, I had to also pay rent and provide a roof over my head. So that at 16, that was it for me. And it was a wake up call. And I always tell people, um, being a parent has nothing to do with your age. No. You either, it whips you into shape or yes. you, you, you fail. In my opinion, there's no black and white. It's just black and white. There's no gray. It either makes you somebody, you know, it may take you time, but it just, for me, it just whipped me into shape. Like, yeah. I just knew I had, I had to do what I had to do. And she did it. Like, she did it. Like, and, and, you know, we'll never know, obviously, to the degree, because nobody knows everything to the degree of what people go through. You know, a lot of times we hold a lot of stuff inside. Um, mm -hmm. we our demons by ourselves. You For know? sure. And, um, and, and, you know, I can't even imagine just even, you know, because you were, you were, you were, you with, um, um, Frankie for, you were with Frankie for a I, short time, right? I, I was with him for, um, this is the baby's about father. two, Two and a half years, about two years, two and a half years. And, um, you know, like any other young couple, we went through the ups and downs. But during my pregnancy is when I was like, if he cheats on me pregnant, like, I'm good, you know, and he did. So, you know, that was hard. But you know what happened after a few years later, the whole MTV teen mom came out. So then it was okay. It was more acceptable. And that really pissed me off because... I had to literally leave my high school to go to a pregnancy high school, like because of the ridicule, the drama, it wasn't accepted. And yeah. I, I'm old, but I ain't that old. You know what I'm saying? Like it was yeah. happening. It was happening in every neighborhood. There was one or two girls pregnant at my age. I didn't I even so know happened to be the one. It sure oh was. So Sorry, wait, it sure was. Tell us about the pregnancy school. It is literally a, uh, you don't really, it, you didn't change classes. It was like in the New Lots area of Brooklyn. So I went from, um, I went from Frankie K. Lane. I went to the opposite side. And it was more of the guidance counselors kind of pushed me and my mom. And it, it, it's just an agenda, like a lot of other things in life. It's very political, very like, no, because she's going to get tormented. It wasn't that they could not legally say she's not allowed in the school, but it was their way of pushing you out of the school. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have absences. You're going to do this. You might get into an altercation. Something happens to that baby. Something happens to you. So my mom was like, okay, she's out. She's got to go. So then you get to the school, and it's just like a bunch of hungry, pregnant, moody girls, tired as heck, 
with their eyes like rolling out of bed in pajamas, some of them, you know, like we just didn't even know what to do, you know. I, we were all lost. And we had teachers that instead of you taking home ec and things like that, but like teach diaper in the, in the midst of wow. math and reading. And they did give you resources, like if you needed help with um, applying for government assistance and insurance and things like that. So in that sense, I can understand why some people needed that because not everybody was fortunate to have a support okay. system. You know, and my parents never turned their back on me, thank God. But right. Because you know, there's a lot of parents that I know that um, turned their back on, you know, my, my friends um, when, they, when they got pregnant young. And they got pregnant a little later than when she got pregnant. And um, they were like, nope, you got to go. Get out the house. Exactly. And it, it's, it's really sad because when I look back now um, as a 39-year-old, and I look back at this society that claims that at 18, supposedly we're this adult and we're supposed to go out into this world and, and, and fend for ourselves and know everything, when I think that is the most crucial time when you're supposed to be with your parents. I think it's and the time you need your parents, when you need to be home. You don't need to be out there trying to figure it out because you're just coming into yourself somewhat. Because when you're in high school, you're worried about what everybody thinks about you. Mm -hmm. and what you wear and how you look and this and that. And then you go into college and nobody gives a fuck. Like and nobody, nobody knows you. Nobody, what you cares. Got on. nobody gives a shit who you dating. Like nobody cares anymore. So you get hit with reality. So I think there's a, a, a sensitive time there. And I, I hate that we've built this idea of like, well, you're 18 now. You need to now get a job, get this, get it together. And it's like, damn, can we start to teach our children instead how to love themselves, how to be confident within themselves, how to know who they are, how to not depend on nobody emotionally. Amen. Something Because that's the problem too. As we're younger and I was guilty of it, which Yano threw me into a very destructive relationship, um, we're yearning for this, um, this void that we have. You know, You're trying to fill something. And we're trying to fill something. And, and, and we make, we make, we, we, we make mistakes, you know? Um, what do you think, um, like, how did you feel? Okay. First of all, let's go back. What was your experience in birth as a 16 year old? Like when you gave birth? So my, my birthing experience was not the typical one. I was, um, having my contractions. I never forget. Woke up out of my sleep 5 AM on a Sunday. And I was just like, okay. They weren't coming so often. They were like every 40 minutes. Um, but I was like, okay, this is not Braxton Hicks. This is real. Like we in the room, this is it. We're in the home stretch. I started to walk. So I lived on one block and um, my child's father lived, let's say, eight blocks down. I walked back and forth from his house to my house probably like eight times, 10 times that day. And he did it with me. I, ha I had my family sit in the living room, like my aunts and stuff, because they didn't believe me. They wanted to see the contractions. Like, no, 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 you're taking this too easy. You've been contracting for seven hours and you're just taking it too smooth. I was like, well, I can't rush the hospital. I'm, I'm not close, you know? Um, I went all the way through the night with contractions every like seven minutes. I went to the hospital twice. And around one o'clock in the morning, they were like, okay, you're either going to break water before 5 a.m. or by 5 a.m. because you've been contracting for 24 hours, we're admitting you regardless. I said, okay, no problem. Um, at that time, my, my daughter's uncle, he went with me to the street and played basketball with me to keep me active. And I was <laughs> like, sure, why not? You got to do something, right? And I was like, oh, I got to use the bathroom. I went straight to go use the bathroom, use the bathroom. And I ended up breaking my water right on the toilet that I thought, no, this is not my water. Is this my water? I was so confused. I was so naive. Like I didn't know what a mucus plug was. Like I didn't know any of these things. I, I thought I was reading and I thought I was smart, but 16, I'm not. So I went to the hospital. I did break water. Um, 39 hours of labor from the first contraction at 6.53 at night, I gave birth the next day and no epidural. I pushed her out. Um, I didn't know the gender because no sonograms. Then it was like two sonograms per, per 
pregnant, yes. you know, yeah. for the health of the baby, it wasn't safe. So two sonograms, they couldn't tell me what it was. So I had very neutral color baby shower. Um, I remember I that. Pushed her out, it was a girl. So I was super ecstatic. I was like, yeah, I got a little best friend now, you know? And um, it was, it was very hard. It was a Catholic hospital. And because I was a minor, check this out, because I didn't know this either. I thought I'm going to handle the pain. And I said, give me an epidural. And they said, well, your mom needs to sign off on it because you're a minor. And my mom said, nope, you're going to push it out the natural way because nobody told you to become a teen mom. And so that you don't come back to this hospital next year with another one, you're going to learn the hard way. And it took me 14 yeah. years. It took me 14 years to have another kid. So I waited till I was, I went from 16 to 30. I was married and a homeowner when I made the next one. You're not going to try me. <laughs> like, I you know, my on the low, that was probably the best decision your mother yeah. ever made for you. My mom would have caved. She would have been like, give her everything. And I would have been there again, nine months later. <laughs> That's like, what I'm saying. I probably, yeah, it's, it's, it's so true. And I, I, at that moment, was so angry with her that she could have I the bet. right over my body. Like, <sighs> unless I'm unconscious and you're my parent, I understand you having to make such a crucial decision for me, but Very. I'm crying for the pain. I'm, I'm crying for the medicines and they refused to give it to me. And as soon as I pushed her out, I hugged my mom and I said, thank you. Because that, for the rest of my life, I could say that story. I did it with no pain meds. <laughs> I did it. My hair was coming up. Did it. Oh my Shut But for my me. next one, I walked in the hospital. I was like, give it to me. I got nothing to prove now. I did it already. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna stop me. Ain't nobody gonna stop me. <laughs> wow. It was hard. Talk about postpartum as a teen. It's real. It's it's definitely real and it is not I, I'm gonna rewind a little bit. Yeah. And just talk about birth control as a teen. So I had friends that were on birth control. I had two specific friends that were thoroughly on birth control. One had, I'm not even going to mention no names, but one had, um, one didn't have the mother that was walking her into the clinic and making sure she was on birth control. She just knew better and she got on birth control, right? And then I had one that their mom was like, nope, we're doing this every month. We're getting our pills, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't know if it was a... Latin or a Dominican or I don't even want to my mom's Dominican my dad's Puerto Rican I don't know where it came from but my mom um never cared to discuss birth control at all and th the only thing that was told to me was don't bring home no kids right how you're not helping me avoid it <laughs> and um you know if you get pregnant you're gonna get fat you're gonna lose your body that was what was told to me over and over, and my sister too. You know you're gonna get fat. You know you're gonna look ugly. Like, like if that was your way of telling me not to have, it, it obviously didn't work, right? I gained weight and had a kid. Thanks a lot. But <laughs> you know, I think it's crucial for parents to be open, honest with boy, girl, mother, father. Discuss it. Find the alternative. Find what works best, and actually listen to your child and ask them what they would like to try. I tried with my daughter um, pills and she was super forgetful. So I thought I was being an amazing mom and giving her the shot every three months. And she was like one of the under 2% people that she was losing her vision, like completely losing her vision due to birth control. So I didn't even know that was possible. Um, but I, I tried my hardest to figure that stuff out because I didn't have that. Nobody said, let's do birth control. They, I, they didn't even take me to a clinic to a GYN, knowing that I was active, you know? Yeah. But I don't know if it was the culture or the lack of education. It, it, know, seems, because... like, it seems like um, it's such a scary topic where they feel so uncomfortable to talk about it, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's like, I get it, because now when I have children, you know, um, even, I mean, the dumbest thing where, like, Tristan, you know, he's a boy, so, so if something he's doing and his little thing, I'll be like, eh, get away from me! I don't know, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, I can't even imagine when we get older and he's older, but you know, these are things you just got to suck it up because it's reality. And yeah, I, I, 
learning now as an adult because you know birth control screwed me the hell up all the way up like i would have possibly not been able to have children had i stuck with them um and not get some type of proper knowledge and what i'm realizing now is that we have to tap in more to our ancestral ways of knowing our bodies our basal body temperature how does it work when we ovulate i can now feel when i ovulate you know, know that's how i created aj my Look second child because i was smart enough to read into all of that and i was doing my basal body temperature i was able to tell you not only when i was ovulating but I was able to tell you at one point before I conceived him, which um, ovary, like I can feel my right or my left. And women can do that when you become in tune with your body. Yes. 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 I want to yes. talk a little bit on the stigma of the, because I'm Dominican. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's like there were times where my mom would have probably suspected that I was sexually active and would never approach me on, oh, let's have this conversation. So right now I'm breaking generation or at least attempting to break generational ties by trying to open up conversations within my family and making things acceptable because um okay we always talk about okay pregnancy and we talk about birth control but what about way before that like why are mm -hmm. we not educating our children on what sex is what are you doing what are the intentions of being sexual with, with someone what are you actually doing you're transferring energy with this person so everything about this person counts where they grew up what type of family they grew up with, what their genetics are like, all these things come into play. And as the women, we are the key component of this whole thing. And then we don't have the conversations on how that responsibility falls on us for a reason. Completely. Oh, oh, men need to get vasectomy. No, 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 no. We, we're, we're skipping steps. We're, we're getting somewhere where we're deviating from the main conversation, which is what are we doing when we meet with another person and exchange bodily fluids scientifically, chemistry wise, what is happening? And I from think young. Like, from once young. you can have from young, those, those little intimate yes. feelings or like that desire. It's normal. Yeah. You could be a yeah. you could be nine and be attracted to the opposite sex, same sex, whatever. And those questions go through your mind at ten years old, eleven years old, middle but school. Then, it is okay. Yes, exactly. Because then we create like a guilt feeling. Yeah. And then that's when we hide things because we're not proud of what we're doing. We're not like we know that the intentions are not there. So I, I thought that was like really cool that you said it because a lot of Dominicans, I don't, I can't speak for anybody else, but in my family, that is not a conversation that we have. It's not, it's going to be a conversation we have at my I'm here, yeah. But, you know, I just wanted to let, like, push that out there so that we understand all these things too, because we can no, get lost like, there. I didn't, I didn't have, I, I couldn't go to my mom, you know, I had a very, um, Marlene knows you, you, Denisha, you know, um, you know, a very destructive relationship with my mother where I didn't have a relationship with her where I can talk to her about sex. I can talk to her about birth control or any of these things. So it became where I didn't want to talk about it with my dad because he's my dad. You know what I mean? So I kind of didn't talk about it with nobody. You know, it was just like, all right, we're just. You're, well, you're you just are the friend that I just mentioned. You are the friend that didn't have the, the guidance, but that I didn't still. Have strong enough to go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to figure this out anyway, and I'm going to do it anyway. Figured, yeah, they know I had to figure it out on my own, you know, and I'm grateful for even Leda, Marlene's mom. Listen, that's my mom right there. Like, her and a few other ones, wow. like, those are my moms. Like, they've always been there. They've always supported me. They've always shown me love. They've always took me in. Like, those are the moms that I saw that were actually being mothers that I was able to look up to and be like, okay, I don't have one to go to, but I see where they're guiding their daughters. So let me just do the same thing type of thing. Exactly. You know? yeah. um, talk about, um, so. Postpartum. Were, yes, postpartum. So when yeah. you were, you know, were you with um, the baby's father, like after you gave birth? After I gave birth, um, he wanted to be around more. So I gave in. Um, I gave in literally in the hospital, you know, because I, th I just thought it was, a moment, you know, and I tried. I really <laughs> genuinely tried. We all know I, you know, we all were not perfect. No one is. And I by far wasn't. I was very young, you know, but um, it, 
it was hard because you didn't talk about postpartum. So yeah. now I'm in a home where I, at that point I was living alone, but I, I come from a family that didn't talk about birth control. So who's going to talk about postpartum? We're not even discussing, you know, before the the how, yeah, <laughs> how are we going to talk about the post? So, you know, I, I had an older sister, but she literally gave birth two months before me. We're like four years apart. We did it together, which is not how it's supposed to be, right? But um, <laughs> I didn't even know then that I was going through postpartum because Why? I didn't know that the signs were like people. I, I didn't even realize that the lack of desire to just even comb your hair, take a shower. I know it sounds stupid. I know there's a lot of things going on right now in the media about who takes a shower, how often, and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it in that way. But when you, you when you deliberately don't have the, the energy to just the go en wash, change your clothes, that you just, is depression. Oh, and, just, and, and, and it's related to the fact that your hormones are all over the place. You just had this baby. Um, growing up, I saw postpartum meant that I did not want my baby or yep. wanted to harm my baby. It yes. Was only, two things it was nothing else it was harm my baby don't want my baby but i didn't realize that it i can love my baby and have postpartum i could feel overwhelmed i could feel stressed i could cry myself to sleep which i did endless nights and mornings all day long you know what i mean i was really good at hiding it you couldn't even tell i don't, I don't you, even think you knew <laughs> i didn't i i but you know what like it, it, it was crazy because in the mix of like she had a baby and then she was going through her stuff. I was in an abusive relationship that nobody knew about. So it was so many, all of us were going through our own battles, you know, but it became a thing where we, we didn't, we didn't want to talk about it because we were, I don't know. I know I was ashamed of what I was going through. For sure. I felt stupid. You know, like everybody knows I'm this tough girl. I fucking fight all day in the school. I do all this, but I'm sitting here getting beat the shit out of my ass every day. Like, you know, exactly. Um, did it ever come a point, because I know, like, sometimes, I talk about this in our book, but, like, sometimes these babies don't stop crying. And they will cry and cry. And they could be, listen, you could do the checklist. Diaper, fed, um, there, no, there's nothing in the clothing, like a, a you know, a thing like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, you check everything. Y todavía, they just cry. I, I think that I believe in the total cliche phrase that God or the higher power, whoever you believe in, um, gives you and puts you in a position where you are strong enough to handle yes. whatever comes your way. So I was given Ashley, my daughter, and she was, when I tell you, amazing. Wow. She didn't give me a hard time. She didn't, she just was nosy. She just didn't want to be the typical kid just playing. She wanted to be a part of the mix, which mm -hmm. is the exact adult that she is right now. <laughs> um, to go to sleep, it was never a hard time. She just had uh -huh. a particular manner. It was like, put her, your hand on her face with her little blanket. And she did that. And she was sleeping all night long, like from the first two months. I was just, you know, I think that God did that so that way I could handle being a teen mom. You know, I don't know how other teen moms do it with colicky babies and that nonstop crying. She ate everything. She drank everything. She had no health problems. I didn't find out till I was three months pregnant. Um, believe it or not, I did multiple um, urine tests. I did labs and I got a negative. I forced them to give me a sonogram. And that's when they told me I was 12 weeks. So wow. here I am pregnant, 12 weeks. We're having a kid. Whether you want one, don't want one, we're just having this baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I I think about like, did you, did you ever feel like you were alone? Because I know even now in my thirties, like I feel like I had a baby, and all of a sudden I have friends, but I don't have any friends. Um. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course. And I had best friends. My how many years later, like 30 years of friendship or more than 30 years, I'm saying. And I had friends, but I had nobody, if that makes sense. You yeah. know, so it's like, I found myself, like, I could talk to everybody, but I felt 
and 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 it's nothing that they did, but I just felt like they didn't understand me. How could yeah. you? You're not moms. You guys are teenagers. Yeah. While y'all are planning the party and the hangout that y'all are going to go to on Friday and Saturday, the prom, the senior trip, so that, I didn't get to graduate high school because I had to pick and choose. Because I was a single mom, because I went through the breakup, I had to continue to pay rent. So how can I pay rent at like $6 an hour and, and go to school full time and still have time to be a mom? I couldn't. So it was pick and choose. I went and got my GED and I worked. I always worked. I know yep. we provide it. So, you know, um, I felt like I had people, but I didn't have people. So I felt alone a lot. And I felt like I, I had them for other things, you know, if I was ready to hang out or if I was, I got a babysitter that day and I could go to the movies, everybody's available. But, you know, they were teenagers. They're not going to sit in my house after school and help me with my daughter and change diapers and it's you know help me cook you know what i mean I, like, i'll be honest now as an adult i feel guilty as your friend i'll be like i wasn't <laughs> even for her like that i'm sitting here at the tunnel nightclub getting fucking stoned and shit and, and she's raising a whole baby and I'm a like, whole but baby. Okay. he's saying there's no way that you would be able to understand that because no. like Cousins, I have a bunch of cousins, and out of my cousins, I, there was one other cousin that had a baby, and three months later, I have a baby. That was the beginning and the end, so far, of, like, our <laughs> cousin crew having babies, right? And they would call me, they would offer, um, some of them would offer to take care of the kids, some of them would even, you know, and even though in the midst of all of that, it's like she's saying, I still kind of felt lonely, but not because of what they were doing, just because I was positioning into something different so great thankfully i was able to realize that they weren't doing anything wrong they were actually doing above and beyond when i yeah. listened to stories like this like i had a cousin um uh joani she even came to my house and and helped me clean my stuff let these still to this day would offer to babysit you know i have a lot of people that are supportive for me so how i have a question how did that support circle look like for you like how who was there like they're there helping you because i think about it all the time i didn't even let anybody help me so i don't know what it was my, like. my support it was hard because i have this amazing sister best friend who's four years older than me that would have guided me had she not been doing it herself for the first time so mm -hmm. she's had a baby in may and i give birth in july she can't really tell me much besides my child rolled over last week. Maybe yours will roll over next week. Like, <laughs> that was it. Like, and, and, and my mom was very stern on, I am not going to cook for you, do this for you. I'm not going to do anything for you because you need to learn to do it yourself. So that way you can be self-sufficient, provide, and don't think I'm always going to be there for you. So my mom, I went to work when my daughter was about three months and my mom said, I'll babysit for you, but you have to pay me $75 a week. My mom. Hey, that did not play. She was like, if it's to party, no. If it's to work or whatever, I, then I got you. $75 a week. But you know what my mom did? She took that money and she would buy things for the house for the baby. She would buy things like, she. it, it always came back. But it was the, 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 the matter of, I need this her thing. to know that you need to be responsible because nobody's going to do this for free. I know other cultures where you give birth and your mom comes from Colombia here and they stay with you <laughs> for two months. Where they do that at? Where they do that at? Like, <laughs> no, I had to do it my own, which is why I'm extra hard on my daughter who I am 38, but I have an almost three-year-old grandson. And she'll tell you, you never babysit. Well, no. I have an eight-year-old. I need a babysitter for him. I'm not trying, to, <laughs> I'm not trying to <laughs> But the truth is, I do it so that you can learn that this is all about you. You have to figure it out. And the harder it is, and the hurdles you have to go up and cross, is maybe going to stop her from recreating another one, and another one, and another one, and being, and falling into that whole... Without the I responsibility. Didn't want, I didn't want that generational curse, tie, whatever, where I was a teen mom, and you're going to be a teen mom. So I was really adamant about like, please be on birth control. Please don't do this. Cause it just, statistically it happened, you know? And, and How? she, she don't listen. She, she made it to 19. She couldn't make it to 20. <laughs> Damn, she was a teenager anyways. Damn. 
damn. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. How is it then? Because then it's, it's you know, it, there's um people like you that give birth in, at 16. And then by the time you're in your mid 20s now, your child is older. Yep. You know, your child I... is dependent. So now you guys have to raise a teen. Well, then we're starting. Well, at least me. Now we're starting a family, but then your child is a teen now, and you're dealing with a teenager in your 20s. It's hard. It's hard. A lot of people say, um, you know, we don't get along a lot. We really don't. Um, I thought the opposite. I thought I'm 16. I'm having a little girl. She's going to be my best friend, right? And she, she was until about nine years old. And, <laughs> and then the hormones kicked in, right? Because puberty is real. And um, then it was a lot of back and forth, a lot of you know, not being on the same page and bumping heads all day long to this day. But a part of it, I think, is the best answer I give to people is, number one, um, I raised my daughter. I did, but I also raised myself. So yeah. I grew up while I grew up with her. With so her, yeah. makes it hard. So it's not like I try to be her sister, her best friend. I was never trying to be neither. I was never trying to be too friendly. Some people say, I was trying too hard to be her friend. Some people say, uh, suerte a lot, because you're too strict. Like right now, you're being overly dramatic. But it's hard because I went that road. I don't want to see you do the dumb shit that I did. If I did it, why would I want you to do it? You know what I mean? So I tried a, a lot of different things to, to try to make it work. It was it was hard. But I, I got a lot of side eye. Um, for example, taking my daughter to kindergarten was crazy. Oh Those moms God. were looking at me like I was 21. And I was in law enforcement at the time. And I would come in uniform and they'll be like, is that your little sister? I'd be like, no, that's my daughter. And they're like, but you look like you're like 12. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm 21. Thank you. You know, um, so the older she got and becoming a teenager in my 20s and she's 12 years old, 13 years old, 14 years old, the moodiness, it was hard. I, I, I kid you not. Like her, her sweet 16, I was 32 years old, 31, 32. Like it was, most people are, are planning their lives at that moment. And I'm over here planning with sweet 16. Like <laughs> it's not easy. It's still not wow. easy. Wow. Do you feel that any, um, like, childhood traumas arose like after you had her did you ever deal with that Any um, trigger things of that nature i think my biggest for me i i i i think that she has her own traumas mm -hmm. from me being a uh, a teen mom you wow. know because uh it's not perfect and i did a lot of changing lifestyle changes i moved from new york um to Florida because I didn't want to be a, another statistic. I didn't want to be another baby mother going back and back and back after being dogged and back because I just felt like I had no other choice. So I moved um, out of the state because I thought it was going to be the best thing for her. Sometimes I think that maybe it was the worst thing for her because mm. I was doing what I thought was best you know, overall. Like I'm taking you out of Brooklyn and I'm going to bring you to Miami Beach and we're going to live a great life. And we're going to go swimming on a random Thursday. And uh, you're going to play in grass, not on the stoop. You know what I mean? But the stoop is what made you and me. And mm -hmm. made us versatile. Made us street smart, book smart, a little bit of everything. And I think yep. that pulling her into Florida, I think that she just didn't know how to find her own place. So she's never really, I think that she has trauma because of those things. And I have my own trauma in the sense that for many years, I swore I didn't even want to have another kid. I was never going to have another kid for a long time because I went through those struggles where, you know, yeah. um, where you don't have to pay the light bill, you know, and you have to pick and choose the phone, the light, the cable, the car, the no gas, call out of work because you can't afford to get there or... Um, mixed water with chocolate because you don't have milk that day. Oh, girl. Listen, I applaud you in every way because I've had my struggles just emotionally, you know, um, 
as a mom in my 30s. And at 16, um, I was a mess. I was, I was a fucking mess. And I, I don't know if I, I don't know, I'll be honest with how bad I was mentally at 16. Um, if I would have made it the way you did, you know, not, not everybody could do it. Not everybody could do it. Um, Ashley's incredible. You know, you raised an incredible young woman who's now an incredible mother, you know, for you to do it technically by yourself, because although the baby father was there at the times that he was, I don't feel he was ever emotionally there for you. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, um, and, and, and that's the hardest part because, you know, I may go through what I go through, but I have a grown ass man who's there and, and, and pulls me back up. Like, all right, get up. We're going to go outside. We're going to do stuff. You know, I'm not going to let you fall into that funk. You know what I mean? We're, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. But when you're 16 and you're by yourself and your friends are partying and your friends are doing this, you know, like, I want you to know, like, there's so many women out there that look up to women like you and you Thank inspire you. And you keep women going and you motivate them and you remind them that they can do it. That they can Thank do you. it. You, we all feel like, I can't do this shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cannot do this shit. Like, you know, especially when you're dealing with finances. That's, that's, that's a whole crazy. stress, you know. And, and it bothers me that this society will invest more in teaching us, in, in investing more in how to terminate a pregnancy instead of teaching us how to be a mother exactly how, emotional up and downs like i said how to know our bodies how to know our sexual connection how to know how to use sex properly so it doesn't consume us to the point where we're emotionally losing our minds over this man exactly you know what i mean like there's no focus on the education also of of money and finances and businesses and having our own businesses and having our own like there's just this, this, this idea of you're going you're gonna to do this and you're going to work and you're going to get benefits and you're going to do this. And it's like, wait, there's a whole nother world that other people live that don't involve that stress because they have the knowledge of how to build a business, how to invest, how to flip their money. Most it's true. Of the times our stress comes from the finances. When we, when we talk about our culture and our, our, our people who live in these um, urban neighborhoods, it all comes down to money most of the time of why we don't have these children. Oh, I can't afford that. Oh, I can't do that. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I have to work. I can't be home with a baby. I can't. But why, why does it come to that? Why are there not other options for us to have that support group? Why don't we not talk about more with these teens' moms about the emotional roller coaster? There's more of a bashing that they got pregnant. Look, I so, I so true. what's done is done. The baby's there. It's get coming regardless. It. Get over it. As you know, there's some mothers that couldn't get over it. Get over it and start to now emotionally be there for your daughter. But you know what? What 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 you said is so real. Why is it that? Um, and I can only speak obviously from my own experience, and not, no shade towards my mom at all. But but people in the urban community, minorities, why is it that we know how to work a system? We know how to work a system. You could teach me the ropes on how to apply for Medicaid, how to get those food stamps. You can yeah. teach me with no shame I've gotten it in the past, yeah. you know, but you can't teach me how to invest my money or open that bank account or open the LLC, create your own, you know, lane, figure out what you're passionate about, stay in school, do this, figure it all out. My mom was very like, if you go to school, I'll, I'll support you. If you go to work, I was young, so I didn't think I could do both. I had to work, 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 work until I became old enough and my daughter was a teenager and I said, I'm going to college and I'm going to get a degree, you know? And, and then I realized that that's a waste of money. I'm passionate and smarter than that and I can still do something else. So that's a whole nother subject. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother one. <laughs> Listen, I told my dad, I was like, you ain't going to get the paper. I, I'm sorry. Just let it go. Yeah. But I promise that I will do something with my life, but I ain't going to give you that paper. <laughs> I also yeah. say that as a society, we invest more money in taking a ba taking babies away from mothers than giving them the resources to get out of the conditions that they're in, that they're not able to take care of their babies properly. So that's also another thing because I was able to witness. Um, I think that might have been like a, a thing for me. My mom had me when when um, she was nineteen, so she was a teen mom. And 
something that she did, which helped me so much, I don't even think she knows, but she had my little sister when I was 20. So at 20 years old, I was able to watch my little sister be born, help my mom throughout her entire pregnancy right. as much as I was partying. But when I was home, I was home, you know, like I was present where I was. So whenever I was home, it was all about my mom and about my sister and the pregnancy. And after the baby was born, I was able to cut her umbilical cord. I was there for my mom's birth and Aww. everything. And I would watch my little sister. Like I, my mom's gift for her baby shower was a bassinet, but it was so that the baby could sleep in my room. Aww. And it helped me because it was like, I took on like an adventure. You know, so I was able to witness motherhood and it was not motherhood, but I was able to witness what oh, mother be like through this child when I was 20 mm -hmm. years old. So through that experience, I did get the nasty looks on the train, which, you know, was crazy. I didn't even know that was a thing. And um, like I got pushed on the train with my little sister five months on a carrier because the lady was like, thinking that was my daughter which it didn't even matter if it was or wasn't that was wrong of course. and and um because of all those things I think I was able to witness and then kind of have like a soft spot in my heart when I saw it. and every time I would go outside I'm like helpful because I see people and they don't hold the door for moms with strollers no. it's like, people don't, mm -mm. They don't care they're like oh, that bueno que le pasen. it's like yo this is a these are human beings yeah. Do it no, it's so true they're doing I, went what they're to, um, I went to New York for the first time. Now, everybody know I look dumb young, so they be thinking I'm a teen mom, but I'm not, you know, so I'd be looking like a crazy <laughs> when I walk out with these three kids. But the first time I went to New York, I remember, and I had to hop on the bus real quick, and I was with Tristan. And you know, I'm sorry, but them damn strollers are fucking hard to open, okay? You be sitting there fucking struggling, right? Trying to close that shit and, and get it up and shit. And I, this is my first time, like, because I was in Cali, you know, so this is my first time now being in New York, and you know New York is ruthless. And I'm getting on the bus, and I'm trying to do both. Hold him, he's a baby baby, while trying to move this damn car. Matter of fact, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Tristan. I was, it was Noah, it was my nephew. It was my nephew, I was with him. And I'm trying to do this, hold the stroller, do all that, and nobody's helping me. They're just looking at me and sucking their teeth because I'm taking long for the bus to leave. Now, because nobody, the bus is not going to move until I sit down. So finally, I get to the back and I sit down, but the stroller, I can't close it. So it's in the way of everybody. So I'm like, yes, yeah, hold on, I'm fuck like, and I just push the shit to the back and I'm holding the baby. But then all I feel was everybody staring at me. And you know, I'm a crazy bitch. So I was like, you could all fucking look at me, but now one of you motherfuckers help me. Now, what are you? I said, no, I'm fucking crazy. I said, you're all fucking crazy is what the fuck you are. And I just sat there. I said, this is unfucking believable. This is why I don't, this is why I can't stand being here. This is why I don't want to live here. This is why I don't want to be here. Like, I was spazzing. I, I could already see you, you know actually how I saying that to everybody. I was, and, and everybody just stood and just turning their faces. Yeah, turn your faces. Because you watch me here. Game and now one person said, well, let me hold that stroller real quick. You know what I mean? Are you okay? Do you need anything? Do you need help out? Do you need nothing and i'm like what if this was my real baby and i was going through postpartum or something which and is probably what they thought they probably thought i was some psycho teenage girl going through postpartum. going through something yeah you know but now one person and i remember when i finally when i went to walk out this older lady came up to me and helped me and said i'm so sorry you're right she was like i was even embarrassed that i didn't even help you she's like are you okay i was like i'm fine thank you and she helped me with the stroller out and then helped me bring the stroller down the stairs to get into the train it's so funny because it's sad. I've seen it. Um, I don't take the train often. Even when I go to New York, I never take the train. But when I have in the past, um, you know, you see somebody elderly, pregnant, baby, common courtesy. And it's just so funny that we touched this subject because just yesterday, um, my eight-year-old um, has special needs. And sometimes he's a little all over the place, but sometimes he's really on point with a lot of things. So I taught him maybe three years ago, ladies first. So whenever we go through a door, whenever anything's going on, he always be like, ladies first, ladies first. So yesterday I taught him the lesson of when you're sitting and there's not enough chairs and you see someone older or a woman, I'm not trying to get up for a man, but if you see someone older and this is for you for the rest of your life, get up politely and say, you can have my seat. And he said, 
to women only? I was like, no. And I explained to him why. Because people might be more tired. You're younger. You have energy. And he was like, okay. But it happens. People don't care. They can watch you with the struggle going down the stairs with the whole stroller. And, you and the type and high heels that I was like coming home from work in Manhattan. Like, I got you. I got you. I didn't have to do that because my mom lived right there. So I had, I had an apartment. She had an apartment. But other than that, you know, the, the struggle's real. I was very fortunate to have a car very young. Um, but a lot of people don't in their 20s, mm -hmm. 30s, and they're doing that struggle every day. There was, um, there was this, um, she's, I believe, 19, um, this girl. She had hit me up. She had DM'd me. I wonder if she'll see this. But um, she actually had a home birth. Wow. And, and I was trying to tell her, you know, she's obviously going through what we all go through. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Of course, but she's 19. So obviously it feels like 20 times heavier, I'm sure. Um, but I was trying to tell her that she's so ahead of the game that she even chose to do a home birth and trust her body that way at that age. Because at 19, I would have never thought about giving birth at home or doing things naturally or any of these things. And that's the path that she's on. So, you know, it's just, it's just dope to see a shift in the generation of them now seeing and taking more control of their bodies and, and their births. Listen, it is, it is thanks to people like you that have exposed the positive side. You know, I, I got to witness your home birth. I got to witness my best friend Tiffany have a V-back. You know, like, those things were not talked about. You know, no. like... People were just so like scared the minute the doctor says, okay, that's it. You're having a tough time or whatever C-section it is or this and the third. Yeah. Um, because now everything is more out there. It's like, it's a double-edged sword, social media and having access to so many people because the good information gets out there just as fast as the bad information, you know? Yeah. But these were topics that there weren't even options when I had a kid at 16. I didn't have an option. You know what my option was? Which hospital does your insurance take? Where do you want to deliver? Yeah. You want to deliver in Jamaica? Or it wasn't like, you, you know, who do you want to see? You know, it, you didn't have those options. Like, that was it. This is your doctor. This is what you're doing. And, and that is it. Yeah, it, we, we've lost a lot of our, our, like I said, a lot of our ancestral ways. Um, and, you know, our parents, you know, they did the best they could based on what they knew. But they didn't know a lot either because they got stripped away from that. But the crazy part, I remember when I told my dad I was giving birth at home, he was like, oh, you're doing the way we used to do before. Everybody gave birth at home. He said, that's how all, that's how all of us were born. You know, and then there were the other ones that looked at me sideways like, what are you doing? You're risking your life, your baby, da, 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 you know? Um, but there's this um, brainwash and indoctrination that we're safer in these hospitals and we're starting to see that it's all coming out that we're not. We're not, yeah. we're more at risk. Um, I remember before I had my children asking, um, my other two girls, like, what was their birth experience? They gave birth at 19, you know, um, Eva and Freddie. And um, it was crazy because most of them, they were either drugged up or, or they don't remember much of it. And that disturbed me because I'm like, this is one of the most powerful times in our lives. Of That's us the magic that we can do. How are we being robbed of this experience where these girls are telling me, I don't really remember much. Mm -hmm. Or like, I, I don't know. It was like, you know, they took the baby and I, all these things, you know? Um, so, I, you know, I want these young girls too to know, like, don't be afraid to stand up for your birthrights. Don't think because you're young, they're going to just, of course, they're probably going to dismiss you like you don't know anything because you're young, but you probably know more than what these doctors do. Because people don't understand these obstetricians were trained by midwives who did home. Exactly. They, 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 ta they taught them everything. And then they went and built these institutions and made it fancy and then did a whole smear campaign. But we'll do another episode on that. But, <laughs> you know, it, there's these, you know, doctors who will belittle you and talk to you like you don't know anything because you're young. And it's like, no, you got to stand your ground and know what you want. You know what I mean? If you want a home birth, if you want a hospital birth, you got to always be in control. I was yelled at because I kept and, asking for my baby. Look at that. I was yelled at because I kept asking for my baby. What? Like, it's my baby. It's crazy. And the reminder that, like, 
hospital policy is in no way anything to do with the law. It has nothing to do with, with the law. Like your human rights yeah. super exceed yeah. hospital policy under any circumstances. Literally, you could be dying and say, please do not treat me. And they have to respect that. They so have we to also, happen. Yeah, we have to learn to advocate very strongly for ourselves in order to be protected. You know, I think that a lot of people also, well, at least I did when I was younger, you didn't think that you had options. So if mm -hmm. you wanted to do, for me, um, at home birth was never <laughs> even thought of, straight up. You know, I just, it's just not an option for me. But um, when you when you think of a midwife, you think of at home, you think of doulas, you think of outside the hospital, you don't think of your regular OBGYN that's going to deliver, no. obstetrician, period. And, and you could actually tailor what you want, even if you do feel more comfortable in a hospital setting, yeah. which I did. I had a midwife deliver my second child because I just feel like they, for me, the experience was very different. You know, it was very more like... They no just have more compassion. Yes, yes, way more compassion. The way I was treated, you know, like I, I didn't feel like just another personal patient. body, yeah. for the moment, just another patient. I felt a connection, like I bonded with her. You know, and, and, and maybe to her, she didn't feel that, but I felt it, and that's what I'm at, yeah. you know? Um, so a lot of the times people go into this situation thinking that they only have one way in, you know, one way out to have a baby. And I think that now with, with these times, people are more open to it. So the fact that you have a friend that's 19 years old and it's like, well, this is what I'm doing at home. And I've seen it um, even on TV recently on one of the Teen Mom shows because for all these years, I watched that show faithfully. Oh, cool. Because I always feel connected. I always feel like I know exactly what they're going through. And even my daughter would be like, Mom, you're like in your 30s, you're about to be 40, you're still watching Teen Mom? <laughs> yeah. I should have gotten paid is what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> I should have had an episode. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But you know, hey, the options are out there. They do it in the public eye. With yeah. the scrutiny of social media. Listen, yeah. that's the crazy part because we didn't have social media growing up. I mean, we're old school where we had a fucking beeper, okay? Like, exactly. So I can't even, can you imagine if you would have been pregnant with social media? I don't think it would have been this way. I don't, I don't even think I would have been the mom. I, I think it, I, I think it could have went a lot more south. And it's crazy because social media, I probably wouldn't even have the relationship like that even created the child. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it, it can literally destroy and it can mend things. You know, that's how I met my husband. So <laughs> going yeah. back six years, but at you the end of the day, like. Oh, I'm sorry. I also wanted to say that we have like a very black and white picture of birth. It's either you're in the hospital letting them do whatever they want or you're at home like going through crazy pain and like you don't know what to do and it's like i don't think we've ever viewed birth properly to begin with unless it was like back in the days because now when i talk to women even when i tell them the little bit of options that they have they're like really what? yeah they're shocked yeah they really cannot believe that actually like i want to say Close to like 95% of women who've had a hospital birth and then shift to a home birth, over 95% of those women talk about how amazing it was and the difference. Because it's like what Jen was saying, we're going through a crossroad in our life. And instead of like being fully present, we, we want to get taken out of the experience fully. We're like, no, we don't even, I'm so, I'm so in fear that I don't even want to see what the situation is like. Like, that's why we want to numb our bodies. We don't even want to I was just going to say the numbing part. There's, there's I, people that actually don't feel nothing completely. Nothing. Yeah. I felt, even my son, I felt. But there's people, how could you feel nothing? Like, how do you say, I delivered the baby? You did. You were the canal holding the baby. I'm not trying to take it away, but it's just like at that moment, you just, what do you, you, you don't feel nothing. You're just there, like a vessel, like. But, yeah. And you, remember we had, we had this, um, what was it called? Was it a sec? I don't know what kind of class, with Miss Amoruso? I don't remember. I don't know what kind of class it was, <laughs> but it had to do where she taught us like puberty and sex. And then she showed us like a birth video. Like but, a health education. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was like, when I look back, 
Now, when I look at birth, to me, I'm fucking fascinated by this shit. I could watch somebody giving birth or I could watch birth videos all day, like a creep, like just sit there, like, oh my God, I love this. Like, me this too. is the baby, a new <laughs> life. Beautiful oh thing. my God. Thought I was the mom. And I'm like, it's all right. You're going to be all right, girl. Don't worry. I cried through like, everyone. Yeah. It's so <laughs> but back in the days, the way they introduced it to us, it was like you were terrified of it. Oh, it's going to rip your vagina. Your vagina's never going to be the same. And you just see this big ass head coming out of the toto and you're like, oh my God, I don't want that. But When's the last time you see in a movie where they show a beautiful labor? Never. And it's always never. like, you're a hot mess. Let me tell you what, yeah. I'm I was in the hospital, yes. I did not do home birth or anything like that. But guess what? I iron my hair. I put some makeup on. I try to get my little matching pajamas with my little <laughs> pillowcase. I wanted to be all cute. But you don't see that. Like, I actually took pride. Like, I knew, like, this is it. We're going to do this. You see the, the terrified, the sweat dripping, the, like, screaming. The screaming. I, yelling at the husband. Like, all these you, things. You know, there's, there's you know, birth is beautiful you know what i mean yes there's um a journey in it i'll call it a journey because we i i, I don't want us to to be afraid of pain mm -hmm. you know? the um the the other thing that i had learned and i'm learning more about breath work um lately more and more to treat like my anxiety and all these things and you know one thing that i realized in my birth when i gave birth at home was breath was everything the way i breathed is exactly is exactly what helped me or hurt me in my contractions and through my labor because when when at first i was not breathing correctly like i was contracting my body because of the pain and wow. then and my midwife kept saying like you have to breathe like you're not breathing and then once i started like listening to her and actually breathing they actually got less and they were not as intense So by the time my third baby came, you know, Matt was like, <laughs> like I, I was all in. I was all in. I wasn't. You were, you were a pro. Huh? Yeah. And even the times that I would break down, I remember how Eva like right on FaceTime and I was like, I can't do this. And she's like, bitch, yes, you can. I was like, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's like, you know, yes, it fucking hurts. It hurts. Yes. But there's there's a, a bunch of, Like, we've gotten so modern in times and, like, in such communication with our bodies that, like, I just want to put it out there. But we have, a, we have a receptor, and it's only open to pain or pleasure. So you can actually block the pain with pleasure. So it's yes. not that it's going to – it's called labor for a reason. So it's going to be hard work, but that doesn't exactly pain. Listen. And we – To cut out the association that like it being hard needs it means that it needs to be painful and it's like no let's take all of that away yes. and understand that the alignment in us it's what's gonna get us through like the proper breathing i also know that there was women that were told and i know that very specifically dominican culture does it i don't know about any other but i know that our culture would tell women if you're too noisy your baby's gonna get stuck in your belly and you're not gonna be able to have your baby which is insane Listen. so people women <laughs> like purposely be silent and hold on all this energy that's meant to be released so you can make space for your baby is now like constricted into you and you can't get the flow because you're not oh listen i sound oh, like a hyena you be thinking you in the jungle <laughs> when i'm in birth okay like i'll be looking back like oh my god like Why I, so I, i filmed so many births like from my for my dad and i be seeing this woman one of them she was like <clears throat> and the baby came out i said well girl fuck it, <laughs> i said well I, i don't i don't birth like that i said i curse <laughs> I, I sound like a, like I'm in the jungle. I'd be like, Ooh! <laughs> I do all the noises. But um, girl, but that's why no was... two births are alike. That's why no two births no, are alike. No, they're not. Because <laughs> my, my first birth, I was doing all of that. I was in a Catholic hospital cursing out all them nuns. Okay. <laughs> And then the second one, I was that, that, oh, here it is. And I, and I actually, my midwife was like, give me your hands. Give me your hands. And I pulled them out. And I put it on to my chest. Oh, that's so, amazing. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And she didn't give me the heads up. She never warned me that she was going to do that. So that was a complete shock to me. Wow. I was going to say something about the pain. Um, oh, 
think about this also mothers we have dealt with worse pain that we've accepted from our mates from life now this is a pain that's actually going to give you a gift that nobody else can give you nobody else so think about the fact that you've accepted pain that didn't reward you with nothing exactly with trauma anxiety ptsd and the list goes on so if we can withstand that type of fucking pain from people from outside exteriors how can we not not even accept the pain but rewire our brains of it not being pain but more of a spiritual journey of this person coming from one dimension to another that you hold the portal to that's fucking amazing that comes with imagine, sacrifice just like anything yeah, else imagine it when you're younger and you're taught this in that light you're going to look at birth so much more sacred so much more spiritual so much more personal yeah. step one you know? is realizing that you can rewire the brain you can and rewire is, the brain that is you can everything. rewire so, the brain we would, I was just talking about my husband and my friend how we're shallow breathers. Like, mm -hmm. there was this breath work um, session I did with my homegirl, and I remember she said when we take deep breaths, like if you take a deep breath in right now, you go, like most of the time, your um, your stomach is contracting in. in. You're not, um, your belly is not going out, which is supposed expanding. to be when you take a deep breath, expanding. Your belly's not expanding. Why? Because we hold all that trauma, all that pain in our gut. So we're not even conscious breathers. So you think about like, that's also another reason why in birth also, we're not even conscious breathers. And that's one of the most important things. Remember, spirit is breath. That's what spirit actually means. And that's also spirit. Avoid, um, tearing and things like that is because yes. we're always being told what to do in our burps. We're always being told, okay, now you can push. Okay, no, don't push yet. And it's like, we're supposed to feel that. We're supposed to we're tell supposed our to know. Oh, shit. Push. That's so true about mid midwifery where I felt that my midwives, it was never like, do this, do that. It said, what do you feel? Okay, so then do that. Oh, I, I don't want to do this. I, I don't want to sit here. I don't want to lay here. Okay, then get up. Oh, I feel like I got to push, then push. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. just as long as they examined everything and make sure everything was good, they knew that, okay, she's going to say it anyways in a second. You know what I mean? And then yeah. I would be like, no, I got to push her. Like, I feel like I got to take a poop. And they but that's exactly ahead. how it should be. They should be there to support you, not direct. That's you. what they are. The midwife used to because you're, you're letting like, your body be naturally go yes. through the process. Let it naturally do what it's supposed to do. You, what you, it's you, supposed to do. I, I had the doctor tell me, "No, you're not ready to push." I feel like pushing. I feel like pushing. Yeah. I, the nurse told me, "You're not ready yet," and I said, "Call now. I am ready to push." My midwife walked in, and that very moment, baby's coming out. Look at that. Like. And we have to know to trust you know. our bodies. Like, mamas, you have to trust your body, trust your intuition. Again, don't let these white coats fool you. <laughs> like, don't yeah. let the white coats and these nurses fool you. Like, they are indoctrinated with a certain thing. That's not to knock them. We are great. Yeah, but they're not all They bad. are there it's... in these emergencies. They help us. They do all that. But they don't know it all either when it comes to natural birth and autonomy of the body. They don't. It's supposed to be teamwork. That. Yeah. It is a, exactly. It's supposed to be a for team. sure. You know, a lot yeah. of times yeah. these these nurses, all these people come with all these different energies from their problems at home, from this and that. You know, to go a little bit sidebar right now because I wanted to say something earlier about help. Um, we we often get guided to get help as parents, especially teen parents, count on the government, count on the system, do this, do that, because you're in a financial fix now, right? So then you become dependent on this $300 food stamp, $200 cash, oh, medical insurance that I don't ever have to pay a co-payment for. Who wants to do that? Because sometimes, you know, insurance costs a lot of money. And by the time you see how much you're paying, it's like, man, I'm not really making a lot and I'm spending half of it on just insurance. Um, but they are, I lived in New York um, for my daughter's first two years and then I moved to Florida. Um, do your research. You know how you have to advocate for yourself, but do your research on uh, programs that are there to support you. I moved to, when I moved to Florida. You know, every every state has um, daycare assistance and all that good stuff. Yes, but Florida actually gave you um, a reward system wow. for for being a parent trying to not stay on the system. So wow. because I showed them the intention of going to here. work. 
yeah, because I showed him I was going to work, because I applied, um, then I applied to become a correction officer, they said, you know what? We're going to still give you the benefits for the next eight months or nine months or whatever it is. And on top of that, they gave me um, $200 in gas every month, gas cards. So your gas cards, I could buy easily a cigarette if I wanted to. I'm not a smoker, but I'm just telling you because it's just a gas card, a gift card to the Shell gas station or whatever gas station they chose. Um, So that, you know, it kind of gave you a reason to still keep going forward. And I think that, I don't know if most states have that, but if they don't, they should because you what you don't want is someone to stay comfortable you want them to go get a job but we all know that that transition is hard you can't just cut me off and then i don't get paid for the first four weeks the right way and i'm just trying to play catch up so that motivated me because i felt like it they, to the point where they even gave me a 500 hundred dollar check after keeping my job for six months wow after keeping my job for six months they gave me a 500 hundred dollar check so i was like I was proud to go in there and say, look, I've been working for six months. You know, it was a huge deal. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's think super is dope. Opposite, which I think is the total opposite of New York State. There's actually, like, you can go back four generations, three generations in certain families where they actually tell the children, like, listen, don't work. Just stay home, but do this. Um, Take the food stamps. Take this. And don't motivate to go anywhere else because if you make a dollar over, they're going to take it all away from you. So I, yeah. I really like that perspective because I didn't even know that that was a thing in Florida or in any other state, or maybe it's a thing in New York and we don't know, but that's a great, a great thing that you brought up because I feel like that's beautiful. Like that's another thing that people don't see that as Democrats, they just not to go either side, but let's speak the truth. And the Democrats, they want you to be on help because that's how they can control you. And now if you switch over to Republican, which again, like I said, I'm neither nor, but if they're a little more supportive, so those states that are red states are actually more helpful to moms well, that are They want you to be more independent. Exactly. For sure. More self-sufficient, more like independent, which is, is, is what we got to lean for, you know? Um, and right now with the state of this world, um, they're forcing you to become independent unless you want to still hang by their fucking balls and, and <laughs> you know what I mean? And then they're going to put these rules and conditions of, of how it's going to apply. My balls, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. You're going to hold the balls. You're going to hold the sack. You're going to hold my ass. You're going to hold everything. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep it right there. And I just never um, understood because it's not like when my parents were, were, were going through it and my mom would get benefits and, and, and food stamps and stuff. It's, it's not like lo tiempo de antes, right now you are on government assistance and you have to actually go through the ringer. Like you yeah. are, you have to actually apply to work. You have to go to meetings. You have to do this. Why do all of that? Like if you need it, need it. I, I can't stand people that abuse it. Um, if you need it, need it. If you don't need exactly. it, give it up. You yeah. know, especially during the pandemic. Like, uh, listen, being a mom is hard enough. We need assistance. Um, whether you're, you're, you're single temporarily, There's no shame. I've done it. I have gone on for six months, taking myself off because I didn't need it anymore. You know what I mean? I'm working. I'm doing this. I'm doing the right thing. I wasn't trying to beat the, or hide money or hide my income. None of that stuff because at the end of the day, I be, I've always, I believe in karma and I believe that what I put out, I'm going to get back, you know? Yep. And if I'm taken, I'm, I'm doing everything the honest way in that sense, you know? Um, but as, as a teen mom, we didn't, I didn't know that I had even those options, you know? It yeah. took me to get to Florida, and I was a little bit older, and I, I, I met people that kind of were there to guide me, you know? Um, so do your, do your work, do your research, look into the community, look into the city, look into the state you live in, and see what opportunities they have. Because for me, all I knew was food stamps, Medicaid, and WIC. Like, yeah. this and WIC this and that you're either gonna get milk or you're gonna get you know food stamps to buy food so one question before because i know we like we, we've been in for a while um <laughs> did you breastfeed i did oh, i wrote it down i did i How did um i did the first three months um mm -hmm. and i kind of weaned off so i was never a 100 breastfeeder i did okay. both from day one because i knew that breastfeeding was going to be the best thing for my child but i also was 16. 
Yeah. And a bitch be tired. Yes. So for me, it was like, listen, at least I could say that I did both. You know what I mean? Like, right. you know, <laughs> yeah. because yeah. I could have just, no offense to anybody, because with my son, I could not breastfeed because of medications and things that I take. My doctors were like, it's not yeah. healthy right now. But with my daughter, I was able to do the first three months, which I remind her all the time when she want to act a fool and be like, you see this? You were all up on this. Okay, <laughs> let's calm down. <laughs> I did have another question and it's also quick um, or I don't know if it's quick or not, but how did your body feel? Like, how was that transition from being like a fresh teenager with like super nice skin to then deal with like uh, having a baby? And then how you did, how did you feel about yourself? How did your body feel? Did you notice changes? Like, what was that like? Let, let's talk about not being prepped and not even by my doctors of what to expect after labor like i did a class a birthing class um i did a 30 minute breastfeeding class like 30 minutes like really like that what was that really going to do for me right like how hard is it to get a baby to latch or to produce milk i didn't know about all these natural remedies and teas and things that you could do i didn't know about those things then which is finally why i gave up because it was just too much yeah. for me right Lack of support, um, yeah. i didn't know i know your body was going to produce milk right and i knew i was going to be able to breastfeed but i never knew how in gorged my breast oh and my sore God. and how big they were going to be like hard as a rock Nobody yes. talked to me about that. Nobody told me that. Nobody told me that I would have to birth a placenta. Who? Yes. Yes. Why? Nobody told Nobody me. Nobody told me that even. So Nobody many moms told me don't that. Know that. So you 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 carry this baby and they're prepping the baby and I'm all excited and the doctor's like, all right, let's go. And I'm like, where are we going? Wait, where, where are we going? Are we going? <laughs> I just had a baby. What are we talking about? I was like, don't tell me there's another baby in there. <laughs> Look, it and took then 15 actually, years for me to realize that you can now take the placenta pills and do all this. I didn't know any of that. Like, yeah. it, it was non-existent, you know? Like, umbilical cord and the nutrients in the cord. Like, I, I was clueless wow. to it all. Clueless yeah, to it all. So, so I just thank God it was a healthy pregnancy. Seriously. Um, but listen, you did the damn thing. You're still doing the damn thing. I mean, she's a Thank grandma. You. That's crazy. Like, she's a <laughs> I say grandma, okay? Correction. I'm a grandma. <laughs> yeah, grandma, 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 grandma. <laughs> and I still can't believe, first of all, I just want to mention, I still cannot believe that your mom didn't let you get the fedora. Like, that blew my mind. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you that I think a lot of these um, teen parent teen teenagers would think twice if they knew that that option was not on the table yeah. if they knew that the option of you know like this i know there's a whole nother topic I, I i would love to come on here and talk as many times because you know i could talk but this whole um abortion mandate and not listen to each his own i'm not telling you which side i'm on but even that like Taking, taking the epidural off the table would be the fight. Because people would think 30,000 times if they knew that there was no epidural on the table. No. Yeah. You're going to push naturally and you're going to endure that pain. How many people would think 100 times fold on how to birth control and how to do this because they're not going to want to go through that experience and they're not ready? They this would think here. about it. You know? We're going to do a whole episode on that. <laughs> yeah, we need one. Um, because I want to give people a different perspective on all that, you know? Me um, too, yeah, I'm glad. I, I won't go too much into it because, like, we all feel to each his own. But we got to admit that there's been, there's been an abuse of it because of our lack of, lack of knowledge of self and our bodies. And what are we really doing to our bodies what? constantly doing these procedures? Okay? Well, I, 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 a birth tunnel... That, that, that is there for a reason, that has certain things in the walls that have a job to do. All that scraping, what are we really doing to our bodies? What yep. is the trauma that we are creating internally? Because I know for me, that should resurface that have, after I had kids. Straight money. So had, you know? My daughter just yeah. said something very, um, very true because she's the third person I know. Uh, my sister, wow. and my best friend, and my daughter. They get the epidural, and it doesn't work. I feel oh, the yes. legs, and I feel the pain. Now, don't get me wrong. 
as you should, because I think now you're not um, missing the experience completely, exactly. right? Like you're still able to feel, but then there's people where they, the epidural doesn't work. They are now numb on one part of their body. So now the focus is not on, I'm in pain anymore. I, I can't even focus on the fact that I'm about to deliver this baby because now my body's going through the ups and downs. It's a roller coaster. You're numb, but not numb. You're in more pain now because now they done punctured your spine and you're not even getting the full effect of it. And then some people have led to going into C-sections even after that, you know, and swelling from the epidural where they're like my best friend and uh, my sister-in-law where you are completely swollen from, from head to toe, like this, like, like puffy <gasps> yeah. completely because your body's rejecting the, the epidural. And so wow. had to put the sleep on her first. So for her to have had a VBAC after that, and she made me sit there and watch videos. She was talking to you, Jen, and watching. Yeah, and, and, and I was like, it's all in here. You are the one in control of your body. It's all in your mind. And you do all the talking. You don't let yeah. no doctor. I have pushed for people that are eight centimeters. And the doctor, how are you eight centimeters? And you're like, oh, okay. You've been in this 24 hours. Let's go. C-section it is. No. I had a nurse tell me, turn over. And I will give this advice to you so you could tell anybody in the future. Um, what position do they put you in in a hospital bed? You're like this. In the back. The time. There's no free gravity. Back. Exactly. So I had a nurse come in and she said, I'm going to tell you what to do, but you have to say that you wanted to do it. Mm. because then they have to listen wow. and she told me get on your stomach like crouch one leg up every 30 minutes alter and go like that side to side when i tell you i opened up centimeters like yeah. that four hours in the god morning. bless four hours and my cousin did the same thing she was hours without and i said oh my god do what i did and i told her gave birth wow. like that yeah, Same there was for like a that. while that I was in. Then my, my doctor, she just, I mean, my midwife had me move in different positions. And boom, just mm -hmm. like that, I started opening up. It's because we also don't, we don't understand that interventions prevent our body's communication. Like we can't, the baby, yeah, like the baby's trying to communicate to the body, which then the body's going to tell you what to do. That urge to walk, that urge to use the bathroom, that urge to drink some water, that urge to like want a different position. All those things are signs from your body that, okay, this is what you need to do. So you can get that. This is what you need to do. And it's like, once we allow these interventions let it be an epidural, let it be any pain medication, let it be um, anything that the doctor, an IV fluid, the monitoring machines, all those things prevent the baby's communication with your body and then having that communication with you. So cute. Hi. That and, 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 you know and, that and, I'm going to have to do this hair? Y'all don't even know what I'm going to do. But that, that is so true. It's definitely the communication and the body and the fact that I, I think about how even at 30, I, I rushed to get an epidural because I didn't want to feel the pain because I had already proven my point, right? And right. now that I think about it, when they come in to tell you, okay, so now when we do it, you know, you're not going to be able to get up. You're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to do that. And it's just like, so we're just signing up not to be able to really do what we need to do. present in the moment. So you, yeah. you, you, can't, you can't do anything. Like you're just, you're just there. Just push when we hold your legs and that is it oh wow and that that's that's crazy you know what tracy wow. tracy just said i was given 18 hours. hours of pitocin because i wouldn't dilate and ended up having an emergency c-section because my heart rate and my son's heart rate dropped so low you know what tracy they cause that that's mm -hmm. crazy. Sure 90 99 percent of the chances are that they cause that with the pitocin because again they're disrupting the natural way of the body if you you guys could watch the the business of being born, it's a great yeah, documentary a great. Um, that Ricky Lake did, and she first gave birth in the hospital, and then she decided to give birth at home because she had a horrible experience in the hospital. I saw it. Yes, I that's and then one that, that she made me see. When yep. they break down everything in the hospital, I listen. I'm like, oh shit, these are all the things my friend says that they went through, and I'm like, oh my god, they caused them to have a C-section. They caused the heart rate to drop. But it's very convenient because how many hours are you in the hospital? How much are you getting paid from your insurance to be in the hospital? Every every little thing that they open to use on you Count. is just yeah. money. Money here, yeah. money there, money here. That drink, and that's what people want to press that button is a whole price tag. Yeah. Yeah. 
And what people don't understand, because like doctors are not supposed to be your enemies. You're supposed to go out and search for a good doctor that connects with you, that understands your beliefs and respects them, right? And then you take it a step further. And this person in hospitals, they have lists of things that they do to everyone, whether you're going through those things or not. Like you don't, yeah. you don't they don't give you a choice, but it's like most of the time, they're just, it's just a checklist of money. Like this is how much I'm supposed to collect from every patient that comes in here. So the second you say, oh, I don't want the first five things on your list. They're like, no, nah, this trick is messing with my money right now. And that's what you exactly. are with their money. Yeah. So you like looking at the interventions and what they do to anybody, no matter what, that's insane. So you're going to give me something for STDs, even though you already tested me for STDs yes. and you know I don't have them and you're going to give it to me anyways? This doesn't make any sense. So you're charging me for testing me and then you're charging me for, for the medicine that I need. Even and, though and I don't how, about, how, about the, how about the moms that give up? Yeah. You mean to tell me that you don't know a mom that has sat here and said, I can't do it no more. I can't push. I can't. I can't. And the doctor says, all right, prepper, prepper for C-section. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How are you going to tell the doctor you need a C-section? And yeah. how? Cha-ching. Sure. But that's it. It's a dollar. It, it, it's money. It, it, and, it's, and it's sad because, like I said, they, we got to go back to our ancestral ways. Oh, like we're that. not a business. We're not, we're not fucking science projects here. You know what I mean? Um, give me my placenta. Why do they get mad when I tell people to take their placenta home? They get mad at patients who ask for their placenta. It's like, bitch, it's that's fine. It's 60 to $70,000 that you're taking out of their pocket, and that's why they're mad. But it's wow. yours. $60, I didn't even know the price tag behind that. That's crazy. Yeah, man. like, they can I don't extract care what you, a lot you of gotta money. do. You ain't gonna do it with my shit. Like, thank you. I'm taking all my products home that part of my body. <laughs> that I really you know, that's the baby, crazy. The you just made me think, like, I just... I requested cord blood for my son because I knew he was um, born with challenges. Yeah. Um, and according to them, they tested my placenta. My placenta was not good. Oh, they um, I, it. I, I don't know what not good means now that I think about it. I, I, I mean, yeah. seriously, to a point where I took pictures of it because I wanted to see it. And I just felt like this was going to help me, you know, give myself the nutrients and the things that I needed yes. for my child. And, and for yourself. My, my, mm hmm Wow. And they said, wow. Yeah. And that's what they told me. Well, these little that's ones what I, think I see. tapped out yeah. of me not being with them. <laughs> yeah. It was a nice, it was definitely the other a nice one's gonna come soon somewhere. The little I'm bullet. so happy that you guys invited me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, I you love were, you and I miss you so much. It. I love you. I love you. And listen, this, this is the team product. There. You see this team product? <laughs> that's her right there. <laughs> Any mom out there, I'm listen, we are here. This is a village. This is what the Mommy Mondays is about. It's about creating this village, about all having open conversations. Do not be ashamed. Y'all can always hit us up, DM us, ask us any questions. We will guide you the best way we can. Um, we're For all sure. in this together. We do not have um, a country and society that caters to our mental health as mothers. So we need each other. I love you, Leda. Uh, um, that's my you know, mommy. So, so we have to create our own village and our own community and guide each other and teach each other all the tricks to the trades that we know. And you know what I mean? Like each one teach one. And that's what this is all about. So I love Straight you guys. Up. Thank I love you for you. being here, for, you know, just spending time with us, sharing your experiences. Thank um, you for introducing me to my new friend. Yes. <laughs> I know. Thank you so much. I All right, say it. bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, <laughs> bye Tristan. Bye, Kalani. Bye. 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 <laughs> Are you done? Yes.